How's it going people, Simon Slab here, and this is your quest guide for the brand new quest, one of a kind. Start to finish, no music or fast forwarding, game on, everything you need to know from A to B as quickly as possible. So, quest wise you need a tailor two cats, King's Ransom, The World Wakes, Missing Presumed Death, and optionally you can complete the Ritual of the Majora, which will give you a few dialogue options. Skill wise you need 81 magic, 74 summoning, 67 dungeon union, and 40 divination. Item wise you will be requiring one cut emerald and your cat speak amulet enchanted. To start this quest come down to Varak Museum, go down to stairs one floor and on the opposite side of the stairs you'll find this door and speak to Mr. Mordart or Mr. Mordort. Head on inside and go ahead and talk to him and ask about the one of a kind quest. Quickly run through the chat say I am and eventually accept the quest once you've accepted the quest you'll receive a book go ahead and read that book now quickly scan through it and as soon as you've done it all quickly close talk to Mordort once again then choose option 1 run through all of the chat then option one again and then option two and then option one once you finish the conversation you now want to exit the museum so once you're top side you now want to right click on your cat speak ami and open it and this will tell you where you can find Bob the cat as we need to speak to him now your best bet is to turn the camera around so it's facing north on the top side and as you can see it's telling me Bob is in the west yours may very well be different to me depending on what time you actually end up doing this quest but all you need to do is head in the general vicinity the arrow is pointing so for me I'm in Varag and it's pointing directly west the only thing directly west of me is Tavali which leaves the entirety of Asgarnia in between and the way to do it is you literally just keep doing this to kind of pinpoint where Bob is actually hiding so now it tells me it's southeast it could be in Falador so my next stop is Falador it's quite simple Bob has been known to travel all over the land uh, he does like to hide up in Berthorpe up with the trolls so you may find him there he will run around in Tavali as well. He's been known to run around in Varak near the West Bank. He could be any of these places. He does randomly change at any given point. But for this section, all you need to do is simply find Bob the Cat. So for me, my Bob the Cat was apparently hiding in this playpen with the rest of the cows and chickens and sheep. Don't ask me what Bob is doing in there, but that's where he was. So once you find Bob, you need to equip your Cat Speak amulet and you need to talk to him. So go ahead and do so. So ask him about the one of the kind quest. Then run through the chat a bit. And then choose option one, surely you'll remember. Then option one, a human you look after. Then option two, maybe I'll check out the house. Once you've done all that, you now need to head to the northeast corner of Berthorpe. So depending on where Bob was, it could be a little short walk. Uh, or I would recommend home teleporting up to Berthorpe. We now need to head to the house directly above the Agility Arena in Berthorpe, which is just to the west of the Lodestone. So, make your way there. So 
So once you're here, the westernmost house, you will find this bloke right here, Unferth. Go ahead and talk to him and ask him about the library. Quickly run through the chat about his books. Tell him you're not interested in his novels. And then tell him you're looking for the library of Robert the Strong. Ask him if there's any place Bob liked to go about. And then end the conversation with him. Next you want to enter his house and first search the bookcase on the east side. You will end up destroying it. Next you want to search the table on the west side. You will destroy that too. Then search the fireplace and of course destroy that because that's what we do. And then search the carpet in the middle of the room. And then you will find a trap door. Go ahead and jump down there. So once you're in here First things first, just to your east you'll find a weapon rack on the side of the wall, go ahead and investigate it. It'll tell you it's covered in rust. Once you've done that, head to the centre of the room and search the desk. You'll receive a book, go ahead and read that quickly. Once you've read it, go back to the weapon rack and investigate once more. This time, take some of the rust from the weapons. You'll receive a bottle of rust. Once you've done that, use your iron oxide bottle with your cut emerald. You will then receive a scroll to animate rock. Once you've got that, head to the south of this room and you'll find a statue. Stand near the statue and then click on the statue and choose to use the animate rock scroll. At which point you will bring Hannibus, a dragon rider, back to life. Quickly run through the chat with him. Choose yes, option one. Then choose option one, sixth age. Option one, are you alright? Then option one, what now? Choose any of the options you want here and quickly run through all of them. So run through all the options and eventually you'll get to the point where he starts asking about travelling across dimensions and the Alundi. Carry on running through all of the chat options and eventually you'll have an option to say yes or no. Go ahead and choose yes. Once you've exhausted every single chat option with Hannibus, it's now time to check the room. Starting from the west hand side you need to check the bookcases. There's one in the centre quickly run through the text and there will be one along the west side wall as well quickly run through that one and then next is to head over to the east side of the room and check the bookcases there So upon searching the east side bookcases, you will finally receive a book you can actually keep. With the Dragonkin Primer in hand, go ahead and quickly read through it. And it's now time to move on to the next place. So first you want to go ahead and home teleport. And to start with, we're going up to Sears Village.
run all the way east just slightly past the bank until you run into a massive blue rock with a giant ass face on it. It's literally just west of the bank. Once you're here next to the mysterious statue, stand near it and what you want to do is go to your imagery and simply click on the animate rock scroll. The rock will then come to life. Choose option 3, I'm not I'm a human, and then I'll rotate you now. Soon as you've done that, end the chat with him, and it's time to move on to the next one. There's four of these in total. So next up, you want to teleport to our dome. So upon arriving in Ardon, you want to first head up your path just to the north. And just as you're about to hit the windmill, you'll see the mysterious statue just on your west hand side. So same as before, head on next to it, stand near it, and then click on the animate rock scroll. Soon as you do through, go ahead and tell him that you are a human. And then run through the chat, and then I'll rotate you now. So that's two down. Go ahead and end the chat with him. So now we need to move on to the third. And the third one you can find just to the south of our dome. So it's time to run through Ardy. So run straight down from your south. Go straight past the north bank. And make your way over towards the east bank. So once you're here, head down towards your south and make your way towards the Tower of Life. Now just to the northeast of the Tower of Life, you should eventually spot yet another mysterious statue. And same as the previous two, stand next to it and use the animate rock spell. Tell him you're a human and then rotate and end the conversation. Nice and easy. So once you've done that, we now need to collect the last one, so go ahead and home teleport to Karamja. Once you've arrived on Karamja, head just slightly to your north until you hit the player owned house portal and almost directly west of that portal you will find the last mysterious statue. As with the previous three, stand next to it, use the animate rock spell, tell him you're a human, and then rotate him. Now you could technically have skipped all four of these, but the nice thing is if you're following this guide, you just got yourself some free XP. Good work. And you can chuck it on whatever you want, so feel free. Nice easy 10k XP there. So once you've done that, you now need to head over to Entrana. Now you need to unequip all weapons and armors, and I'm pretty sure you can't take runes in with you either. Basically, go in near enough bollock naked. The only things you need on you are the two books and the animate rock, and you'll want a little bit of food just in case. So whether you use the edge bank and then teleport to Port Sarim. Either way, I'm going to be using the player on ports personally. 
So if you don't have the bank in player and ports, then feel free to pause the video while you actually go and bank yourself. So once you're at your bank, go ahead and get naked. Soon as you are naked, you want to head to Intrana. So to go to Intrana, for those of you who haven't done it in forever, it's on the northeast side of Port Sarim and there's a bunch of monks there, very easy to figure out which one you need to go to. And then just simply head on over. So once you finally arrive in Intrana, we need to head to the very most northwestern corner of this island. To do that, you first of all want to go around the eastern side, and then head north. You then want to cross the bridge, and as soon as you're over, head towards the northwestmost corner. In the far, far northwest, just into the ocean, you'll notice the top of a mysterious statue. Get as close to it as possible, and then read the animate rock scroll. As soon as you do, run through the chat with it, and ask him what he is. Then tell him you're not afraid of Dragonkin. And then option two, and basically run through every single option this statue has to offer you to get all of the information. So finally, once you've run through every single chat option, it's time to move on to the next part. So first off, you want to home teleport, and we're heading off to Edgeville. As the next couple of parts, you do actually need some gear. But this first one... It's probably best to not take any gear, instead take a large chunk of food, as we actually need to head into the Wildy and into the Ferinthi dungeon. So, I would advise stocking up on food, because, well, it is the wilderness, and you will always find penises here. So, to get to the Wildy... the Wildy... To get to the Ferinthi dungeon from Edgeville, you want to head directly towards the northwest until you hit this little Black Knight's Fortress. As soon as you hit that, head more or less northwest until you hit the other fortress directly in front of you now. And you want to skirt around the eastern side of it. And then carry on heading directly north. And directly north of there, you will find the entrance to the lower entrance to Ferinthi, which is where we need to go. So, from here, it's a bit of a problem. If you're unlucky, then you will run into PKS here. If you're lucky, then you might just get away with it. So, you want to head east directly from the entrance. And be careful when you click as any given point in time as you're running towards these green dragons or around them you can get a quick little pop-up asking you do you want to continue the one of a kind quest and it'll put you into an instance so basically circle around these green dragons until you get that pop-up like that it's the kind of pop-up that you could easily click and cancel accidentally But anyway, once you've got it, go ahead and say yes, and you'll appear in this separate little instance with a green dragon and your nice little dragon rider, Hannibus. So, quickly run through the chat. Talk to Hannibus. 
and ask about the quest, and he will tell you that there is a glowing stone for you to check within this room. In the southeast corner of the same room where the green dragon is, you will find a large rock with some glowy letters on it. Go ahead and check that out. So as soon as you've studied it, go to your dragon primer and quickly run through it. And just to make sure, I would recommend studying the rock again and then check in the primer once more just to make sure you have picked up everything and as soon as you've done that it's time to move on to the next couple of steps and uh, throughout this we will be running into dragons so anti-dragon fire capability of some kind or another will be incredibly useful from now on so I would recommend going to Edgeville because that's pretty close to a bank So once you're in Edgeville, I would highly recommend banking and getting yourself geared up as we're going to be fighting some iron dragons as well as some celestials. We're going to be talking with the QBD and the KBD and then there's a few special instance battles coming up. There is one instance where you will be in the wilderness for about 3 to 5 seconds. So be wary of that whilst you're doing this. If you have no fear, then take your best gear. If you do have some kind of reservations, then I would recommend something like the World Event gear, as it's actually pretty good armor, so it will give you some decent defense. And, well, it's very easy to get. You will require anti-fire of some kind, as you will be fighting dragons, obviously, so either an anti-fire pot, super anti-fire pot, or an anti-fire dragon shield, or the DFS, either way you will need some anti-dragon goodness so make sure you bring some of that with you so once you're fully equipped you have everything you need go ahead and teleport over to Karamja our first stop is the iron and steel dragon room So as soon as you're in Karamja, head just to your west and go ahead and enter the dungeon. So if you haven't been in this place for a long time, then here are your directions. Run straight to your west, chop the vine directly in front of you. You then want to take the northwestern path, ignoring the northern path and taking the northwestern. Follow this pathway all around until you hit some stepping stones, and then go ahead and jump across them. Next, you want to run directly south in this room. And you want to take the far southeastern passage. Not this one here, but the next one down. So the very bottom rightmost passage. Once you're down here, you then want to go through the southeastern exit. So go ahead and chop the vines to enter this large square room. Carry on through this room and break through the next set of vines and you'll see some black dragons. Black dragons? Black demons, sorry. Dreaming. So once you're in this room, all you need to do is head south and wait for the pop-up to appear on the bottom of the screen. It'll ask you will you want to carry on with one of a kind. Choose yes. Be prepared to use your anti-fire potions as soon as this chat is over, otherwise you will get battered by the iron dragon. So here's all you've got to do. Make sure your anti-fire is on, 
you need to kill three iron dragons. Now they'll come one at a time and Hanabus will stand back. As soon as you kill one, Hanabus will talk to you, quickly run through the chat, tell him option one every single time, and another iron dragon will spawn. Go ahead and kill this second iron dragon and Hanabus will talk to you once again. Choose the first option yet again. And then last but not least, he will finally summon a third iron dragon. Go ahead and rip this one apart. And Hanabus will talk to you once more. So as soon as you've killed the third iron dragon and you've run through the chat with Hanabus, it's now time to pick up some magical glowy green letters again. So this time the magical green letters can be found on the western wall just before you hit the Dungeoneering special entrance. They're literally on a little pillar on the western wall. Go ahead and study them, then check your primer. Quickly run through the primer and then just for safety go ahead and check the words once more just to make sure you do actually have them. Now this may seem stupid to say check it again and again but honestly it's best to make sure. You don't want to be coming running all the way back down here. So once you've checked it once or twice and the pop-up for saying you've now got some extra information in your primer comes, it is now time to move on to the next part. So this next part we're going to be saying hello to the one and only QBD. Don't worry, you will not have to fight the QBD. You simply need to enter its lair and a cutscene will actually happen. You won't actually fight the Queen Black Dragon. So once you've arrived in Port Sarim, you want to head just to your northwest and enter the QBD layer. If you have the agility level, then I'd highly recommend using the shortcut. For good reason, it'll save you quite a lot of time. If you don't have the agility level, obviously you're going to need to pause the video right about now. Until you reach down towards here, the QBD room. So as soon as you're ready, go ahead and click on the QBD portal and choose yes to continue one of a kind quest. Make sure it actually pops up and asks you if you want to do one of a kind and make sure you say yes, otherwise you will actually fight the QBD. So as soon as you're here, go ahead and talk to Hannibus and you'll have, well, a weird conversation with the QBD. So first off, choose option 3, Your Majesty. Then option 1, I seek a means. Then option 1, tell me of Dragonkin. Then choose option 1, yes. And you'll be outside the QBD's lair. So next up, we now need to head over to Dragon Tooth Isle. So easiest and quickest method is simply to lodestone teleport up to Canifis. Alternatively, you could teleport to a bank and use an ectophile to head to Port Phasmatis. Either method will do. So we now need to head to Dragontooth Isle. To get there, you actually need to go to Port Phasmatis, which is just east of the Canifis Lodestone, so head on east. If you haven't done the quest to allow you to enter without having to pay Ecto Token fees, you will need some bones and buckets and some pots to actually grind down some 
bones to actually get some extra tokens to end up. Which, yes, will be kind of annoying. I apologise if you actually have to do that. Either way, once you're here, go ahead and end a port Phasmatis. And head over to the port on the southeast side. On the southeastmost stanchion, you will see a ghost and a very, very small boat. This is the boat we need to take to get to Dragontooth Isle. So go ahead and right click the ghost and travel. So here you are, you've now arrived on Dragontooth Isle. So from here, you now need to head to the south side of this island. And as soon as you go through the little passage to enter the south continent of this little island, you will see this little dungeon here, the mysterious entrance. Go ahead and enter. So upon entry, you'll have a little conversation with Hannibus, and you now get to meet Celestial Dragons. So for this section, you need to constantly keep killing these Celestial Dragons for a period of time while Hannibus' progress bar keeps going up. So use your anti-fires and get stabbing yourself some Celestial Dragons for a little bit. It should take about 4 kills, possibly 5. It's fairly straightforward, there's nothing particularly difficult about this. If you're using anti-fire pots and you're wearing an anti-fire shield, you'll take no damage as long as you're using range or mage. And if you're using super anti-fires, you won't take any damage at all if you're using mage or rage. So yeah, honestly, quite simple. Kill a couple of these until the progress bar is full. Simple as that. So upon killing about three or four, possibly a fifth celestial dragon, you will appear where you originally started. Go ahead and talk to Hannibus, and you'll run through a little conversation with the dragons. As soon as you've done so, go ahead and get out of aggro range if you, like me, was in the middle of attacking a dragon. And our next visit is over to the King Black Dragon. Now this is the point where you will appear in the wilderness for 3 to 5 seconds, give or take. It is up to you whether you want to risk your best gear, or whether you want to use something a bit lower. But you will get into a fight against three monsters and a separate boss altogether after the point where you're in the wilderness. So you will need something decent at the very least. So go ahead and restock on food and prayer pots and attack pots and anti-fires if you brought them along with you. 
You won't need the anti-fires at this point, but you will likely need the combat stack pots and some prayer. As soon as you're ready, go ahead and enter the QBD's layer and choose yes to go in on with the one of a kind quest. It'll also warn you that you will end up in the wilderness. So upon entry, Hannibus will be with you. Go ahead and carry on through the conversation and then choose the second option. And you'll then appear in the wilderness with Hannibus and the KBD. A resource dungeon will pop up right next to you and I'd highly advise quickly clicking on this. Once you've done that, you will be out of the wilderness. Good times. So you'll appear inside a cave, carry on with the conversation, and then choose option 1, listen to Hannibus. Then choose option 1, can you help? And it's now time to fight three enemies at once, all using different combat styles. So this fight honestly is fairly straightforward. It'll be fairly straightforward for anyone wearing something like the World Event gear or Barrows or the God Wars Dungeon gear, something along those lines. All you need to do is simply chuck on the protection prayer of the opposite of your attack. If you don't have access to Soul Split, that is. If you do have Soul Split, then obviously Soul Split will be your friend. You shouldn't have much problem at all with these fellas. Simply wipe all three of them out. So, as soon as you've killed them all, go ahead and talk to the White Dragon. Run through the chat with him and eventually you will receive a cutscene. You will then appear inside some kind of dungeon even floor, and in front of you will be a dragonkin. Go ahead and choose option 1. Then option 1 again. Then choose option 2. Option 1. Then option 1. then option 2 then option 3 and then option 1 the dragonkin will then start to walk off, simply follow him Upon entering this room, you'll have a little conversation with both Dragonkin for a little while. Then choose option 1. Is it that is at this point that small divination orbs will start to flow into the room go ahead and siphon 25 memories from them you will need 25 for this part
So upon gathering 25 memories, go ahead and feed them to the Dragonkin inside the cage. And be prepared for the last fight of this entire quest. If you're a low level, you may find this fight fairly difficult, but for those of you who are fairly high level and have access to Soul Split, etc., this fight will be fairly straightforward for you. So you'll appear inside Guthix's chambers, and you'll be there with the Echo of Jazz. As soon as you finish chatting with him, the fight starts. The fight itself is fairly straightforward, nice and easy. He does use magic against you, so if you protect from mage, you'll be fairly well protected against him. I doubt you'll be doing a massive amount of damage to you. If you are a high level, tactics are the same as always. Just chuck on torment, not torment, uh, soul split. And that's pretty much it, to be totally honest. Occasionally he will spawn little shadow puppets on either side, although they're very low level and you can tend to ignore them, to be totally honest. They don't do anywhere near enough damage to you to actually warrant killing. So, as soon as you've killed the Echo of Jazz, go ahead and talk to it. You'll then appear back in the room with the Dragonkin, and Hannibus will also be there. Run through all of the chat, and then choose option 2, then option 1, then option 3, and finally option 4. Then choose option 1, and you'll appear outside of Dungeon Eren. Quickly run through all of the chat when Sharagon arrives, and honestly that is pretty much the end of the quest. You can run through all of the chat here and you'll be given a decision and the choice is either take Hannibus with the other Dragon Rider and go back to his home world where the Dragon Riders will likely die out or tell Hannibus to go with the Dragon Kin and hopefully try and get a cure for the Dragon Rider race. The option is entirely yours, and, well, same as always, I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen in the future, so it's entirely up to you which one you pick. There's no right or wrong answer. Other than that, that is pretty much it, people. So, for completing this quest, you will gain 90,000 magic XP, 80,000 summoning XP, 45,000 dungeoneering XP, you will have access to the Celestial Dragon Resource Dungeon, two Treasure Hunter Keys, which you can use in the Treasure Hunter. You will also gain the two Hearts of Ice. Players who have actually completed the Ritual of Marjorie can also gain a bonus 25k XP. And you also gain the 10% bonus for rotating the m Mysterious Statues earlier on. On top of that, you do gain the Dragon Rider Amulet, which isn't all that bad, it adds 4% crit to all combat styles and does give you a plus 10 prayer bonus and it, that's it, it doesn't give you any boost to armor life boosts but it does improve the damage of the dragon breath ability on magic so if you are a mage it may very well be handy there I will be testing that out myself on top of that you can kill the celestial dragons for the rest of the dragon rider kit and other than that, that's pretty much everything you gain from this quest, people. So yeah, that's it. Quest complete. So congratulations on that. Hopefully you found this guide useful and you've finished off this quest nice and easily. So until next time, people, I will catch you all later. Have a good one.